Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, I will help you understand the query execution workflow in SQL Server. I will show you core architecture of SQL Server and by referencing to this architecture, I will share how data is retrieved and modified with select and update queries. Please do not forget to hit that subscribe button and let's get started. Firstly, let's try to see how a basic select query is executed in SQL Server. Suppose there is a client making select query. The first component which this request touches is SQL Server network interface component, which establishes a network connection between the client and the server. SQL Server supports several protocols like shared memory, TCP IP, and named pipes. Shared memory is mainly for local connections, while TCP IP for remote connections. Named pipe is mainly for local area networks. In other words, for example, if our client is making local connection, shared memory protocol is used, while TCP IP is used if the connection is remote. Okay, after the request is received, it is unwrapped and passed to component called CMD parser. Here, the query is checked for syntax mistakes. If you made any syntax mistake, for example, the request is stopped at this stage. If the syntax is valid, the next step will be the binding, where all objects referenced in the query are checked whether they are valid and exist in database. For example, if uh, you might be referencing right a table which does not exist in database, if so, query is stopped here. After the parsing and binding, the hash of the query is generated, and that hash is checked against the plan cache in the buffer pool to determine whether a suitable execution plan already exists for this query. You can ask what is execution plan? The execution plan is a series of instructions to execute a query in the most efficient way. In other words, it is the most optimal plan to execute the query. When the SQL Server generates a plan for the first time for the given query, it saves the plan in the plan cache in memory so that it does not generate the one again when the same query is run in the server. I'm going to make a separate video on execution plan in my future videos because this is not a small topic. So if the plan cache exists, right? Execution plan cache exists, it is passed to query executor component to execute the query. What is query executor? Query executor, as name indicates, executes the query plan going through each step in the execution plan. Okay. In other words, it is just executor of the plan. It will execute each step and bring the data from the storage. Okay, what if there is no plan in the cache? The plan in the cache might not exist, right? Since the query might be uh, being run for the first time or the plan might have been deleted from the memory. In this case, SQL Server generates a plan newly in the component called optimizer. And uh, the plan is passed from optimizer to query executor in, in this way. Query optimizer is a very secretive component of SQL Server. It is just the uh, golden part, you know. How it finds and generates the optimal execution plan is kept secret even within Microsoft. What is known is this component is cost-based feature, which evaluates multiple ways to execute the query and then picks the most uh, picks the method with the lowest cost. I want to mention that after generating the plan, Optimizer does not only passes it to executor but also saves it to the plan cache for future use. In this way, the plan cache is generated also. Okay. After getting the plan, how does the query executor brings the data from storage, right? So for this, it first connects to access methods component. 
This component is the interface through which data is retrieved and modified from storage. This component contains the codes, all of the methods to retrieve the data. However, important point, this component does not perform data extraction, but passes the code to the buffer manager, okay? So this component, uh, what I mean is this component does not do anything by itself. It just passes the codes, the methods, to another component called buffer manager. Buffer manager is responsible to bring the data requested in select query from data cache in buffer pool. There is a very important point here. If the page is not in the cache, buffer manager does not bring the data from disk, okay, directly. Instead, what does buffer manager do is it just gets the page from the database on disk, puts it in the data cache, okay, in the buffer pool, I mean, and passes the result to the access methods and ultimately to the user. Okay, so this is how data is extracted in SQL Server. To summarize, uh, the select query request first touches the protocol layer, then it is parsed and bounded, and afterwards the execution plan is generated if it does not exist in the cache. And uh, here the pl plan is passed to the query executor to extract the requested data from storage. Afterwards, ex access methods gives a related method to extract data to buffer manager. And buffer manager brings the data from the buffer pool and submits back to access methods and ultimately to the client. Okay. Now that you understand the life cycle of select query, next step is to determine what happens when the DDL comments like update, insert, and delete queries are run, right? So good news is that the data change queries are exactly the same process until the access methods component. In the case of data change, we involve only transaction manager component. SQL Server, as you might know, follows right ahead logging. Okay, mechanism called the right ahead logging. What I mean is any change to the data with update, insert, delete queries, right? Firstly, should be logged to transaction logs for recovery purposes. And then the data is changed in the buffer pool. The transaction manager is responsible for this. SQL Server, in other words, when the data change query comes to access methods, access methods goes to transaction manager first and transaction manager logs a change in transaction logs and responds to access methods. And after getting the log record confirmation, access methods first submits the related request methods to buffer manager, which changes the data in the buffer pool. Again, important point is buffer manager does not change the data in disk directly, but only changes the data in the buffer pool, in the memory. After changing the data in the buffer pool, the confirmation is sent back to the access methods, ultimately to the client. So this is the usual flow of data change queries. Okay, I want to mention one point. You might have paid attention that data change the data is changed all in memory, right? And confirmation is sent back right after that without any synchronizing to, uh, to the disk. This is done on purpose. If we change the data on disk while transaction is running, the query performance becomes very slow because writing to the disk takes a time. Therefore, the change is done only in the memory. In the background, the process called lazy writer and checkpoint synchronize the data to the disk okay it does not it is in the background process i have made a separate video for this process please go through the video on the link uh, on the right uh, above okay to summarize this is how uh, select and update queries are run we have talked about and also we talked about the sql server architecture okay so uh, in the future videos, I'm going to talk about more about um, 
execution plans, how to read them, how to extract them. Please do not forget to subscribe if you like this video and keep watching the future videos for more videos of SQL Server. Thank you.